Hello, uh, you're watching Faking Sanity podcast. Uh, we're knitting and spinning and random other stuff <laughs> podcast. Um, uh, I'm Cindy. I'm Angel. And uh, you can find us in a few places. On Ravelry, we have a group just called Faking Sanity. Um, oh, and we're called Faking Sanity because that's the name of our business in Dawson Creek, BC, Canada. It suits us well. Yes, <laughs> yes. And we're a used bookstore and yarn store and cafe and, yeah, well, a little of everything. A little bit of the gifty stuff that we make. Yeah. Um, so we're a Faking Sanity group on Ravelry. And then I'm Parian on Ravelry. And I'm Morealaise, um, M-T-L-A-I-S-E, because I'm French and weird and couldn't think of anything easier to remember. And on Instagram, our store Instagram is We Are Faking Sanity. And my Instagram account, because, you know, we have to make it difficult. Um, my Instagram account is Small Town Canadian, <laughs> CDN. And mine is Montréalais. No, no, it's, it's not. not. It's Montreal or in DC, because by <laughs> then I decided I could do it in English. Um, so still MTL for Montreal. Uh, so M-T-L-E-R-I-N-D-C. We really should um, start putting them like on the, screen, on the screen so that we don't have to spell it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Come find us. Um, she's more active on everything <laughs> than I am. I'm, I'm a terrible social media person. I don't even have a Facebook. I deactivated it about a year. You're not missing anything. I know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm bad at the intro thing. Yeah. Make you, you do it. Fine. Make you do it next time. No, you mock me. Actually, this she is good. was pretty bad at it too. <laughs> we did a few takes of the intro on a, a couple most times. of the podcast so far. Better than the first podcast. We did the whole first podcast twice because, yeah. you know, it didn't record sound. <laughs> Um, we had tested it, like a five-second blip, and there was sound, so we didn't think of it, and then flipped the camera over to the other side. And so now yeah. we test as we're going to record. <laughs> um, Want to start with whips? Yeah. Okay, yeah. you go for it, because you've got more than me. Okay. Oh, no, we've got the same amount. Same amount, I keep I forgetting think. that I have a whip in my lap. Um, so, well, I'll start. I'll start with the mocking one. Um, last time I had shown um, how I do my heel flap. Uh, when I do a heel flap and gusset heel on my socks, I often put the flap on the bottom. So this is another example. Um, but this one is actually how it should be. So normally on a sock, you'd have your heel flap along the back of the heel, and then your heel turn, and uh, you pick up the, the stitches, way. and this would be on the sole of your heel. Um, I do the opposite, so I'd knit it toe up and do the heel flap first, so it's on the bottom and it's cushiony. And But this one actually has... The turn. A fancy little heel turn um, so that it fits when you put it on and it doesn't look so weird. Have you ripped up the other ones yet? No, I was mad at myself, so I set it aside. That's why I pulled these out uh, and did, did a little bit more. Last time, if, if, you were, if you didn't see last episode, she realized that she had missed part of the uh, heel How turn. How do you miss a heel turn? I didn't miss part of it. Well, I didn't do a heel turn. Yeah. I did the heel flap and then picked up my 36 stitches and knit in the round. That was it. No heel turn at all. So it was like... A tube and then just square right off. Yeah. The, it was horrible. And how did I miss that? <laughs> I've done this so many times. How did I miss, like, the shaped part of the heel? Mm -hmm. um, you should say what yarn that yeah, is. Yeah, so this is actually a yarn um, we've carried here at the store. Uh, it's Fleece Artist, which we've oh. talked about before. We love it. Um, this is the BFL sock, so they don't have it in fingering weight anymore. Um, but they do have a heavier weight one of the BFL, and it's such an amazing base. And this was the um, blackberry colorway, and it's just stunning. Kind of dark um, berry reds and a bit of plummy blues and purples. It's just stunning. I love it. Um, so we actually um, took home a skein when we first got in BFL sock, and I loved it so much I got another one for myself for these. Yeah. So. And I was going to say, and we have the blueberry... You said it was blueberry. No, blackberry. Blackberry. blackberry in right now on one of our other bases. Yeah. Which, oh, just... It's such a beautiful colorway. We love these And the artists. sock itself is just a plain vanilla, like, three-by-one rib with the heel flap on the bottom. Um, and it makes a cute little... Sock pocket. You gotta put the... Book. You've gotta put your thumb in the heel. Oh, uh, okay. And then... It's more of a gonzo than a sock puppet. Yeah. Or a snuffle up, I guess, or something. <laughs> For those of you who remember Sesame Street and Muppets. Well, they're both still on. Oh, are they? Yeah. I don't feel so old anymore. We, we, there, there's no kids in our lives. We have no idea, you know. But, yeah. We keep, well, we have kids in our lives. They're called our staff. 
They when, are oh, so young. Yeah, so young. <laughs> I feel so old when they mention that something in the store is older, older than, than they, they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my first whip is actually I finally cast on with my uh, Biscot AC uh, rainbow colorway. It's the Bis sock base. It's so lovely. I I've mentioned this a few times. I love rainbows. <laughs> you do. So I started. I'm just making a generic fingerless mitt, and I think I'm gonna make gonna make short fingerless mitts because I have short stubby hands, <laughs> and um, and then I think I'm gonna have enough to make socks if I use uh, if I do black heels and toes and cuffs. Yeah. So because I have really short feet as well. Yeah, you totally should. It's going to yeah. look stunning so with the it's, black. I it love is how it's just beautiful. I love these little micro stripes. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, oh, and it's such a nice yarn. It's so She's soft. She's knitting some socks out of it as well. And yes, the, the ones it's with no fabulous. heel turn. <laughs> yeah, at, at, and I also have some of their, the same colorway, but in their Erin weight yarn, which is also lovely. And I, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Horrible. Uh, horrible. Um, I, I already made a hat out of it, but uh, I gave it to a friend. Um, but I have like four more skeins of the heavier weight stuff. So, yeah. And I don't have a pattern. I'm just, uh, I've done a lot of fingerless mitts, so I'm just making it up just as I go. It. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to be so gorgeous. I, I really like You're going to love I'm gonna, those. I'm going to maybe knit on them while we're talking. Um, my second whip is <gasps> actually, I, I had talked about doing um, some charity hats, but I also wanted to do some tin can knits, knits right now. The grocery girls are having a tin can right. knits, uh, knit along. And so I thought I'd combine them, but I really like it. Um, so this one might not be a charity <laughs> hat. It might be a Christmas gift or it might be for me or it might be a charity hat. I'm not sure. So this is the gather pattern by tin can knits. Oh. Just looks and so it's neat. just such a cool. I love this smocking. I love wrapping the stitches like that. It just looks so neat. Um, and the yarn is another fleece artist. I, I'm a bit of a fleece artist um, lover. In case you haven't picked up yeah. on that yet, uh, this is the fleece artist merino three six, which is kind of a, a thin worsted. Like it's heavier than DK. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but it's on the thinner end of worsted. And the colors. This is the Nova Scotia colorway. And the colors are just fantastic. I just like, and especially mm -hmm. with slip stitches or wrap stitches like that, the you see the variegation in the skein yeah. is just so gorgeous. I love it. I love it. You can so, make it for me. It would look good on me. It would. It'd be too small though. I think that oh, one would be yeah, too small for you. Yeah, I have a big you. head. Ugh. Oh. No, <laughs> sorry. It looks cute with the needles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Such a good look. Um, um, it would fit. No, this that's okay. is a small I can, size. I because I was that. thinking initially, I'd do it for a charity hat for the cancer ward. Um, I was thinking, do it a bit smaller because if you have no hair, you've got less to fill the hat. Yeah. Um, but, but I then, have a pretty small head, well, so and it you're fits worried me. That... And I was a little worried that these were too... When I did it the first time, I did it on a smaller gauge. I ripped it out and started over. Yeah. And the inside, you have those um, smocked wrap stitches on the inside too. And they were more raised because I pulled them tighter. Mm -hmm. um, and I was worried that might be abrasive if you're extra sensitive if you're doing chemo. But this time, like I did it it's on better. a much looser gauge, oh, so it doesn't feel yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel raised at all. So I don't think it'd be a problem. So I'll yeah. probably decide if I have enough. I might just make two small ones and have one for me. Well, oh, I have for... some left over from when I used that to make. I've I made a hat oh, and from scarf for hat. my sister. Yeah, and I have some left over. So. Colorway is not the same, but you are not colorway. Colorway is the same. Dye lot's not the same, so you could alternate them or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think yeah, yeah. I love it. And I love that colorway. It's, it's called Nova Scotia. It's and, gorgeous. I yeah. love their colors. They're yeah. fabulous dyers. Yes, they are. So, I'm excited to get our next yarns from them. We haven't Ooh. gotten any in a while, so it'll be so exciting to get yeah. some more of the Parks yarn. Eventually. Yeah, well, and and some other. Yeah. Some other stuff too. Um, my second whip is actually a whip I've had this is ongoing a massive one. forever, um, but actually working on it forever, not just, you know, start it, put it away, <laughs> come back to it five years later. Um, it is, it is a hexagon blanket with sock scraps. All sock it scraps. Is, it, it is every kind of sock yarn you can think of. Um, uh, it's from my leftovers, it's from minis, it's from leftovers that 
Ainge has given me, our friends Sarah and Jocelyn and Janet and yeah, Liz say, and Kathy. From yeah. Kathy, uh, like they've all given me some. So it is every color of the rainbow. It is. And every square woo. is a different combination. There are us- there are two squares that use the same colors, yeah. but in reverse in different orders. orders. Um, and luckily, it is now big enough that I can actually use it as a lap blanket. It's officially a lap It's quilt. officially a lap, <laughs> blanket. a lap blanket. It's not a quilt. No, I said. Um, Uh, It's fabulous, and it's just little crocheted hexagons, and it's got four different colors in each one, and then they're all joined together with gray, and I've even got a couple different colors of gray in here. Um, You can... Hard to pick up on the camera, but there is one gray is slightly darker... It's a little darker... Than the the rose beside it. Because, you know, I I run out of gray, and I just pick a different gray. It doesn't really matter. But you should have enough with these two to finish the... No, I actually picked up... Like a up, twin size, right? I picked up more um, knit picks in gray to finish it, because I think mm-hmm. I'm going to run out of these. Um, these are both... Both the grays are knit picks. Uh, I've got gloss fingering, and I've got something else. <laughs> gray from knit picks. Possibly from knit picks. Now I'm questioning myself. No, they were both nitpicks. I forget which um, one it was. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they were out of one gray, so I got a different gray. It's all good. It's a scrappy blanket. And then I got a third gray when they were out of both of these ones. So you're going to do like that gray on both ends? So yeah, that it's I think so. Symmetric? Yeah. So right now I've got the bit darker gray that it does every fourth stripe. Um, I mean, not that really. I, it's, once it's on my bed, it's not like anyone's going to see it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I love it. The, it's, it's the springtime hexagon pattern by Kim at Eggbird Designs. It's going to um, be fabulous. Yeah. It's, oh, it's already awesome. Oh, crap. <gasps> and an apparently one of my ends came out. That's not going to be fun to fix. Well, at least it it's is in just the middle one square. Of I'm gonna fix this. I will figure it out. Um, maybe I'll show you next time. <laughs> maybe. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's no big deal. Very sad. It's no big deal. I will figure it out. Don't know how that happened. But very sad. That's okay. No. Um. <laughs> and this, this is my giant bin of scraps. It's the rest of the blanket. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It. I just have. Uh, basically, fingering white scraps of all sorts. Um. Yeah, and I got I got scraps from everyone, and then I'd also bring the bin to knit night and dump it on the table, and we'd have fun and, pairing and packages make, of four yeah, together. And, and it was great fun. Make everybody pick four. Hey, we're back. Uh, we got a phone call, and Angel hit stop instead of ignore. No, I hit I hit decline on the phone call. I think it automatically stops the camera when no. you do it because that's what happened last time too. Did it? Yeah. You said it kept going. I thought so. Anyway, um, I was saying that, uh, yeah, I dumped out all the scraps on the table and made everyone pick out sets of four that they thought went together. Um, and I and I did little hexagons. And then... I, it's so fun because there are some that are really dark and some are really vibrant just because everybody paired some together. Mm-hmm. So some were all like coordinating colors and some were very high contrast some. and yeah. some were just wild, wacky mixes. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a fun blanket. And I'm... I'm assuming I already said the name of the pattern, but just in case I didn't, it's Springtime Hex... Just a sec. Springtime Hexagon by Kim at Eggbird Designs. You had before it canceled. Are you sure? Are you positive? I'm positive. Anyway, um, we'll go on to FOs. Okay. Um, So what I had started to say before we realized it wasn't recording anymore was that um, there's not tons of knitting this time because... We both do other stuff as well, like I make soap and lotions and aromatherapy blends and Sadita's stitch mm-hmm. markers and chain mail and, and all that sort of thing for our local crafts markets for Christmas. So um, we only have a couple of FOs this week. So I thought I would show off my very, very first um, knitting project. I was a little crazy and decided that the scarf they recommended was, was boring. Was a little crazy, huh? Um, so the, it was just like a garter stitch scarf mm. on size 15 needles, and I hate... Still a little crazy. I was crazy. Um, on like size 15 needles or something, and I hate working on really big needles. I, my hands cramp up. Um, so I treated myself to some 
uh, some of the yarn they had at the shop there, which is now closed where we took the class, but it's uh, Alchemy Yarns of Transformation Bamboo. So it's this 100% bamboo, like you can see the shine and the sheen is just incredible and the drape is fabulous. And uh, I picked up this pattern while I was there, just a very, very simple lace and it's got diagonals with a um, V in the center or there was an option for a diamond in the center. I did the V. Um, and then I just knit and I got to the center part of the V, um, so about two and a half feet um, in about six months because it, I didn't know how to fix mistakes in the lace. It's very, very simple lace. It's just yarn overs every seventh stitch. But it was your first project. But it project. was my very first project. And um, I didn't know how to fix it. So whenever I made a mistake, I would try to fix it. But 99% of the times that didn't work. So I'd frog it back and start over from scratch. And so I stopped counting how many times I frogged it when I hit 50. So the first half of the skein was knit at least 50 times. So as you can see, the yarn holds up beautifully. <laughs> um, it's Technically, nice and not Technically, it wasn't the fuzzy. first whole half. It was mainly the start. Well, yeah. She'd get about that well, far. I got up to about Oh, no, there was a couple times. A couple times, yeah. but yes. But so, it does. But I love the pattern. So the pattern is called Diamonds on the Diagonal by Ilga Leia or Leha from Nova Scotia. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, and it was just a nice, simple design. And I hadn't realized... Um, when I was knitting it that I knew so little about the lace fixing because I was like, it's yarn overs, that's easy. I learned how to do that, I'm good. Um, but fixing it was a bit harder, um, like fixing the stitches above the yarn overs if yeah. I got out of whack. So, um, But then I was at Knit Night once and there's Marilyn, who, whom I love from our old the Knit Night. The Lace Queen. We used to call her the Lace Queen because she knit, oh man, shawls Gorgeous. and shawls and shawls yeah. and like massive shawls and she knit for hours a day on these lace weight shawls that looked amazing, just perfect. And she taught me about um, lifelines and I will love her forever. Um, so Marilyn, if you're listening, thanks so much. I still use lifelines all the time and I have you to thank and I think of you every time. Um, so I just use dental floss for my lifelines and so I'd put it in after every eight rows because that was the length of the repeat. I'd put a strip of dental floss through the stitches and then keep knitting and if I had to rip back, I'd rip back to the dental floss so I never ripped back after that more than eight rows at a time. And so it took me six months to get to the halfway point, and it took me three weeks to get to the end. So seven months, and I finished this shawl. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't realized the color in this yarn was not set really well. I had never used Alchemy yarns before because it was my first knitting project. And so you can see the front of it, the colorway is called pewter, and it's this dark pewtery gray with a bit of um, variegation in it, just subtle tonal stuff where it's a bit more green or blue in there. Um, but when I laid it on the towels to block, you can see there's actually a fair bit of difference in the color from the front to the back of the shawl. So all the color bled out of the back um, to this pale silvery gray with hints of green on the, on the side that was on the towels. But I loved it so much. I would have been horrified and probably given up knitting if it was a sweater or something. But for a scarf, I actually really like the way it looks. Yeah. So when I hang it, I, I often drape it so that I can see the light and the dark side. Yeah, so. they, it looks really cool. Yeah. It looks purposeful. Yeah, I actually did the same yes. thing the next time. I knew how to set yarn by the time I did this pattern again, and I made one for my sister. Um, but I actually did the same thing. I didn't set the yarn first so that I could block it and have one side really dark and one side really light. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun once I expected it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't have any knitting FOs um, today, but so I thought I would show some of my um, stitch markers that I do. I, I do. I make chain mail jewelry. So I started making chain mail stitch markers. Yeah. And I've got three different designs here. Hopefully I can show them off. I just put them against the black because they show off better. These little ones are, it's a weave called Byzantine. That's my um, favorite. I have so many of uh, bracelets and necklaces yeah, in that weave. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's probably my favorite. I've been doing it for quite a while. Um, and I almost always do it two colored just because it shows them off really well. And I just have them on simple rings because um, I know a lot of people worry about snagging with that, but 
I'm very good at making my joints. Oh, you're meticulous. Um, They're better than a lot of ones that have no joints. Yeah, so, um, and I usually do little sets of five or I sell them individually as well. And then I've got these ones, and it's actually a new weave. I, oopsie. Oh, back it up a little. It's, Sorry. It's, um, yeah, okay there. This is a new weave I'm doing. Uh, it's called a barrel weave. It's, again, a two-color one, um, and I like it. I really like it. Let's see. If and sometimes... No. <laughs> it's all right. Um, some... Uh, I, I did some like black and yellow ones and they look like little bees, but these are just pink, pink and lime. And then these ones here are just a, I don't know, I've never really come up with a name for them. They're kind Daisies. of a, a daisy or a yeah. trinity. Like yeah. it's the three rings in one. It's Yeah, it's three rings all looped together there. And they're just really, they're really light because this is um, anodized aluminum. Um, these are my favorites to knit with. Yeah, and they're just really light. They dangle a little, but not tons. And I absolutely love making them. I have loads of fun with them. I, I've got about 30 different colors and, yeah. and uh, I make them and sell them here at the store. And I also do jewelry and stuff that my, my sister goes to um, craft sales around, um, around, well, mainly in town, but like yesterday she was out at Bonanza, which is just across the Alberta border. And she sells our stuff for us there. And yeah, um, I really like them. And, Eventually, we're going to set our Etsy store back up. Soon. Yeah. Eventually. Eh, it's been a while. We We've closed it down temporarily when we opened this store. Um, mm, just, seven years ago. Just so that we could, you yeah. know, get this established before we reopened it and still haven't. So yeah. now we're actually planning, hopefully in the next few months or a year, um, we're starting to stock we, it up. So we were thinking maybe Christmas. Yeah. We'll open we take up. a week off between Christmas and New Year's from the brick and mortar store. Um, well, we closed for a week. <laughs> closed is better. We're in here washing carpets and doing whatever needs to be done. Um, but hopefully we'll have some time to take some pictures and put up our Etsy store then. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's my, that's my stitch markers. Um, you've got another FO, right? Oh, I do actually. Uh, this one is, is officially one of the charity ones. So this will go to the cancel ward. I really liked that faux brioche, uh, knit that I did. So it was the... Faux brioche hat and scarf set by Christina Frere King on Ravelry. Um, and I liked it so much and I had yarn left from the Karen Big Cake. So I just made another one with the other end of the um, of the colorway. So this one's more green with just a touch of gray. So I made it long enough that you can wear it slouchy, um, unfolded or just fold up a nice fairly wide brim and it'll be a beanie style. So. And I changed, I did it pretty much to pattern. I just changed the crowns uh, because I had a different stitch count. I made it smaller. Um, so I changed the crown so that the stitches lined up a bit better I like uh, it. with the rib. But it's just awesome. very simple. But yeah, there, I, I was in the mood and I was enjoying the knit. So I made another one. So that's it for me for FOs that today. Is, that is F FO. That's all of them. The FOs FO. are FO'd. <laughs> um, and stash acquisition. I have oh, none. I have a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. I feel like I'm going to be talking forever. You are. That's so, all right. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so... i knit. We talked about this being a knitting and spinning podcast, but mostly it's been all knitting. Um, no, it's not. I've You've been, talked about lots of spinning. I've been spinning on like one project at a time. So there's not tons of spinning to show, but I'm just gonna reach over and grab this because I forgot to bring it within reach. Um, so this is the Honwe, the the blue and black that I showed last week in like loose fiber top form. And oh, there, you can see the color just about perfectly. I love this breed. It's got a little bit of natural sheen. It's not shiny at all, um, but this is the first bobbin done. And I'm about a third of the way done through the second bobbin. And I've decided this will be the second color in my returning shawl, um, which is the one I showed last week. I didn't bring that one this week because it's just more brown triangle. So it looks exactly the same, just maybe an inch or two longer and wider. But so this will be basically that, a, you just had like a light this much fingering done. weight. Um, mm. So it'll be a fingering weight once it's washed. Uh, to, and then I'm just about to the point where I'll add the blue. So I've got to finish spinning this. But that's been my ongoing project and fiber the the cost of shipping is expensive in canada and you wait for a long time so rather than buying like a normal person where you buy one braid or one skein of yarn at a time i save up and buy like 
five at a time or six at a time and do that once or twice a year rather than, you know, one a month or something like that. Despite what it seems like from... We've had stash acquisition yeah, every this time. This summer was really weird, though. Yeah, it was. Um, but, so, I got <gasps> some more of I'm this I'm going to honey. Edmonton again. We might have more stash acquisition. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and we'll have more yarn for the store to show you next time, hopefully. Uh, hopefully. It might It might be the two podcasts from now. Oh, depends we'll Depends on the shipping. Um, it's coming from Canada, though, yeah. so it won't get stuck Unlike at the border. This stuff? Like this stuff. Oh, every day. I want my fiber. <laughs> I want my fiber. Where's my fiber? <laughs> Um, so I ordered this um, from Kate, uh, who runs Heavenly Wools out of New Zealand, and I love her fiber. She does the Honui that I rave about just about every time, and she has merino as well, and some merino silk, or Honui silk blends that are just to die for. Um, so I ordered this at the end of August, and she had gotten sick and was, um... I dropped a stitch. Oh no! Oh, okay, I'll put my knitting down. <laughs> Um, yeah. But yeah, she had gotten sick and, and had said that the shipping would be delayed. But then our border agency is checking more parcels right now. They're dealing with trade stuff. And so I think more of the parcels are getting checked. And this, I'm sure, ended up sitting there for a month. Because usually parcels from New Zealand, from these specifically, from Kate's shop, take about three to four weeks. And this was... Uh, one day off of eight weeks and I was getting very antsy. I thought it was lost in the mail and I was just heartbroken. Um, so I got, um, this is her 20 micron merino and it's called Shades of Ink. And it's a really subtle, a little bit of purpley blue, some light blue, and it's just so soft. There's a bit of denim darker blue in there. I want it's that. It's amazing. You gotta spin that up for me. Okay. Or that one, or that one, or that one. I, I got a little bit. <laughs> um, this one is called uh, Blue Gum. So one of the things I love is she dyes on the natural fiber. It's not a white base. So there's gray, there's dark gray, there's like a light oatmeal, there's a dark Moorich color that's all in the natural color range of this breed. And so when she dyes over them, you get really cool kind of subtle color variations. Yeah, and they're kind of, kind of heathery, but not... Yeah. 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 I love it. It gives it depth without like... Really fancy dye. I yeah, think is... I I love this. So this is blue gum, which I think is a type of tree in New Zealand. I might be wrong on that. Sounds right. Um, like... But I love like it's just really subtle colorways. And I saw the picture of this one, and I thought it was pretty. But then I saw it spun up, and I knew it had to be in my next order. I was just so enthralled with how it looks spun. So this is the blue gum dyed on the dark gray, and this is another ah, of the a eucalyptus tree with blue green aromatic leaves and smooth bark. Well, there, there you go. go. Learn something new every day. Um, Google knows all and sees all. all. Oh. Um, How did I live without my phone? I know. I used to mock people who were on their phone <gasps> all the time. Me and too. now it's like my brain. Yeah. My brain in my pocket. But yeah, this is another one of her fine Honwe. So she has the Honwe in fine, which is kind of 22 to 23 microns. So really soft like Merino. And then another one that's the medium Honwe in medium or in like 26, 27 micron range. Um, but to be honest, it's a lot softer than other fibers in that range. I find it as soft as merino. This is probably oh. my favorite of her Honwe colors I've ever seen. It's so pretty. It's, I'm going to pull it out of the... It, it's She amazing. can't get it out. <laughs> get, ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is called Salamander. I'm perfectly See, normal. It would match. <laughs> You're not getting this one. This one's mine. This one's for sure mine. It's not going to the shop. It's not going anywhere but my stash to knit with. Um, so it's got this vibrant, vibrant mm, violet that goes into a dark purple into this blue that's got kind oh, of it's teal, teal that goes kind of teal here. And the teal goes into this bright electric neon green. And yeah. it's just stunning. And this is the fine Honwe again. And it's so soft. And this is going to be a shawl that is going to be wrapped around my neck. Yeah, all I the love time. it. Actually, I think I might do a scarf because I might wear that more. Um, but I'm tempted. It, it might just be like a, a thin, long crescent shawl mm -hmm. so that I wear like, it like this a scarf. One, I was like, I don't wear scarves. And then I actually, yeah. this is this is my Waiting for Rain that I showed last week. Yeah. And I actually, yeah. Started wearing it. Yeah. But yeah. Well, plus it's cold. So I'm wearing it and this. <laughs> So Sorry. squishy. Squishy. That was squishy. Look, you would you could even wear that. <gasps> oh, I could. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> oh, seriously, okay. you could just wear it like this. <laughs> Give it 
<laughs> oh, that would keep me warm all winter. Oh, it Give snowed. It, it snowed. No, it didn't stay for once, but it snowed. It's winter. Yeah, we're we're. The, the snow doesn't usually stay this time of year. It but, does. Next week's Halloween. But usually it, it stays for a day or two. No, it's, no, no, no. I grew up here. I've been here seven years. We've never had snow that stayed. And in last October. year, it snowed on September thirtieth and stayed. Did it? Yes. I've she has a terrible memory. Um, yes, and. We, like when I was a kid growing up here, we would design our Halloween costumes to go over a snowsuit. That's just normal in Canada. We well, that, that is. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not normal in some parts of Canada. Okay, well, we Vancouver, did. we certainly didn't. Fair enough. Um, okay, we'll get so into I the have, shinies. I have two left. So these are both brand new colorways that Kate did, and mm. I love them. I like that them. one, too. You could make me that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she started doing um, her Honey blends mixed with either mulberry silk or um, tussa silk, and I got a sample that she had sent with my last order, and I knew I wanted to get one of them this time. And she had these new colorways. They're all jewel tone gradients, and they all start with this natural dark gray uh, of the Honui, and it's mixed with, um, this one is tussa silk, all the jewel tones, and this is the um, uh, ruby colorway and she's got sapphire and peridot and like so where where the red is so they're all different jewel tones so um, but it's just fabulous and it's so soft and you can see kind of the subtle sheen of the mm. silk in there and it's it's amazing and this is the medium honui but with the silk it feels just as soft as the rest it's and it's just gorgeous I love reds. What are you doing I to was, my fiber? I was using it as a pillow. It's mm. not a pillow. It could be. It could be. This one? Mm -hmm. I really like that one too. Oh. See, she can just spin it all for me. I, she doesn't. She, I have bought a few you've off her. You've bought a few. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one is ebb tide. And <sighs> she snuck a peek at this because she donated a skein in our um, Sweets Off the Wheel group on Ravelry. Uh, when she was just testing out the color, and this was one I knew would be in my next order, and it's the fine honwe mixed with mulberry silk, so the the super shiny, smooth silk that everybody thinks of when you think of silk is mixed with the honwe. And look at the shine on yeah. this; it's just stunning. Oh, you can see the shine best on the darker colors there. It is beautiful. But it's just insanely bright and cheerful, and I love. I love bright green mixed with dark blues. Like this combination, just every time. Ah, I, I, oh. <laughs> I have no words. I just love it. I love it. So I'll be spinning lots and lots. I just love this. <laughs> it's so nice. I shouldn't drool on it though, right? No, no, that um, might make like crunchy bits. Yeah. So that's my. Fi Ugh. <laughs> you like that? See? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so that's my fiber acquisition. Um, so I probably won't be getting any fiber now unless I get Etsy gift certificates <laughs> for Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Um, that, that'll be my haul for a while. I've got a pretty decent stash. So <laughs> it'll be the next time we place a Malabrigo order or if I get Etsy gift certificates, I might get a bit more, but that'll be it for a while. Well, and that'll keep you busy for a while, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Especially uh, some of these I plan on spinning thicker, like for worsted yarns yeah. for winter, so they'll be quicker spins. So mm -hmm. that's my stash acquisition, yeah. and now I, I'm high on fiber fumes. <laughs> um, so we'll do the, the Whip Lucky Dip. Um, I was so very was bad. bad. The one that we pulled out last week didn't get finished it's been a it's been a weird couple weeks yeah. and I was working on a lot of other stuff but it didn't get finished but we're still gonna pull out one for me to have done for next time so I'll so have to have two done for next time and I'll start hassling her earlier in the week so there's still time I just I was sick and yeah. well and it's been a bit of a stressful week yeah and, and I was trying to get stuff done I was Frantically making Lego stitch markers. No, not Lego. She makes well, oh, I do do that too. Fidget toys. Yes, I do. Out yes. of um, Legos. Lego style blocks. And they're just. Not Lego style. They're actually, actually Lego. Lego. Um, they're just so cool. And you can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just but I, I do also make Lego stitch markers, which I've got to make some more of that. The Lego heads are yeah, adorable. Yeah, I do little Lego heads. The next time she makes some, I'll make sure to set some oh, aside I've to show do on some. here. Okay. 
Um, she so this drills is my... through the Lego heads to make the <laughs> stitch markers, and they're just It's adorable. really disturbing to sit there and like drill through the top of a Lego head, but <laughs> but it's kind of fun too, because I'm sick and twisted. Um, so lick, lick, lick the blabby No, can, I'm not going to can... lick anything. Um, her whip, lucky, lucky dip, dip bag, <laughs> I'm going to draw something out of. I can speak, really. Yeah, yeah. I didn't make up any new words yet today. No. Just okay. said the wrong ones a few times. My, my oh-so-fancy... Uh... <laughs> you can't have a project bag for all 67 oh, works in progress. Oh, this is cool. Oh, I recognize this. Well, this I actually have to get done because it's a Christmas present. Yeah. And, speaking of Angel... Uh, spinning stuff for me. This is a gradient that yeah. she spun. So this one uh, is actually also from Heavenly Wools that uh, I just spent the last 10 minutes talking about. This is her merino though. And this is the Inky Mix, which isn't um, that one? Uh, the first one you showed. Yeah. So the Inky Mix, this is on, dyed on a white merino base. Right, yes. This is dyed on, on the Honwe. On the but, Honwe. Oh, this Honwe, is sorry. shades of ink. It's, oh, some it's not of the same, same colors, it, yes. but not all of them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it doesn't um, have this one. less of the... Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, no, that's that's this color here. Well, this is more... It's it's because it's on oh, the gray. Dyed on okay. the gray, that's the difference. On the gray, it looks much darker. That's this one here. Yeah. And this one are the same color. But dyed on the white, it looks like a truer, lighter teal. Yeah. So, and this would this be the purple here is this bit. And the navy is this bit. I like so, it. Yeah. Just more subtle colors on the gray. Um, and it is um, the Simple Yet Effective Cowl by Tin Can Knits. Yeah. And it's so squishy. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. Can I cowl yes. over my... Cowl over your shawl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's yeah. a great look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this. <laughs> I feel like a babushka. <laughs> babushka. Get it down. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is for my mom for Christmas. Um, she doesn't watch the podcast. <laughs> she gets a, a she gets enough of us um, talking, but and she's not a knitter. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, well, and. I made her pick out the color and yeah so I just finished it in June so I'm not just. terribly <laughs> that's only four months five months that's pretty good it's for me. pretty good yeah so I just have to I have two ends to weave in and then I've got to block it so presumably that should be easy yeah. and did the pattern call for a worsted weight or did you just adjust it for that I that's have what I spun. no idea <laughs> I'm a terrible at this um I I hack patterns all the time, so I just don't even think about it. Yeah. I I didn't mention when I did this one, I, my first project, I did that too. It called for one skein of fingering. Yeah. And I I didn't want to knit uh, fingering, and I love this, so I got DK weight yarn and yeah. bought a couple of skeins because I knew I needed more yardage. So. But yeah, so, but tin can knits, I mean. Is most... that a tin can knits? That's what I just said. Tin can knits. Oh, I should totally it's, do one of those. It, it's such an easy cowl. It's just, it's rows of knitting and rows of purling, and it, it just makes a... Yeah, and it looks nice in a gradient. I love gradients. I do, too. I have some other gradients I'm going to start with. But, yeah, okay. So that is the mm. two that I will have done for next week. I'll no, hold it to not it. next week. Next, next time. Podcast. Next podcast. She's going back to Edmonton next back week. To Edmonton. I'm, her mom has to go down for some stuff, so she's going to drive down with her and yeah. accompany her, yeah. which is she's, nice. She's You're going a down good daughter. For, she's going down for medical stuff, so I don't really, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I get to get out of Dawson Creek for three whole days. I get to run the store. Um. <laughs> she's going to convince her mom to go to a yarn shop, I'm sure. Oh, I'm certain. Uh, we might be picking out your Christmas present. Ooh. Mama like that, because mom never has any idea what to get us for Christmas. Mrs. Brown's bag. Yeah, or, you know, yarn or fiber yeah. or... I um, have some idea of what you like. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, just because I was joking about a bag, we are mm. looking at... We're talking to someone about getting some handmade, like locally handmade project bags for yeah. the shop, and we're so excited. So stay tuned if that interests you. We will have more news about it soon, hopefully. Yeah. Um, we're super excited. We got to see some samples, and mm -hmm. we're thrilled. So she, she does really fun bags. So 
I'm very excited about that. Me too. Um, so I guess just culture consumed. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I felt awkward calling it culture consumed this week because I well, listened... last week you or last time I know it, I feel awkward calling hockey culture, but I pointed out that culture isn't just you know opera and stuff. There's high culture, which includes that kind of thing. There's low culture, which I think hockey fits in quite well, <laughs> and there's pop culture. And that's been mostly what I've been doing this week. Yeah. I I've followed hockey news. I haven't watched too many games because they've been depressingly bad um, for my team lately. But so I've been watching podcasts. I've watched, you know, more of my usual sci shows and stuff like that and mainlining grocery girls. Yeah. So I'm up to episode like 34. So I've watched like 66 hours. Yeah, we're we're the nerds that if we find a new podcast, we like we start, start again it at the beginning and go through it. So once yeah. I catch up, then I'll start once looking at, at other podcasts that I've bookmarked but mm-hmm. haven't done yet. So yeah, so well, that's been mostly it. Well, uh, I actually than... watched some stuff, kind of this yeah. week. Um, uh, oh well, you had told me about it. There's a show on Netflix called One Day at a Time. It's so fun, and it's well. So there was a there was a One Day at a Time in the what eighties? Eighties, uh, late seventies, early eighties. I think Which I remember I never watching watched. it as a kid, so I didn't remember much about it. Yeah, just that I really enjoyed it. And it's, this one is a remake of it, apparently, but it's about a Cuban family living in America. Yeah. And it's, I just really, really liked it because it, they're realistic people. They're dealing with realistic yeah. issues. And um, serious issues. Like, it's... But so they deal with serious issues in a very funny way. Yeah. And it, it actually, like, it's not like a sitcom or not like an old style sitcom where every week there's a reset button and everybody's back to their, like... Yeah storylines continue and like the mom is is a um what army army, army nurse. Nurse. yeah i was like i couldn't remember what yeah army she, navy yeah she's an army nurse um well back from afghanistan and dealing with some of her issues from that and yeah, it's just really really good yeah i and like I, shows about people that i would i would be my neighbors yeah yeah, yeah. it's Though every time they talk about healthcare, I go, hey, I'm Canadian. <laughs> uh, Sorry. <clears throat> um, um, <laughs> I really like to that, like some of the things you normally see, like a lot of sitcoms do the token non-white person, which is a horrible <laughs> way to say it. But you know what I mean. And, person of color. And but you, but or yes. token immigrant or token yes. like Whereas, not necessarily color or race yes. but from yeah. somewhere else yeah and i love that the landlord is that in this and he's he's a secret canadian um which i just he's, love and he's very much the token white guy well okay there's two token white guys but yeah it's it's fabulous yeah i, I, I like diversity it's well and it's That's such a stupid thing to say but, but it it deals with serious issues in a in an approachable yeah. way. Yeah. Um, it's like why I loved MASH yeah. so much. Yeah. Like the, there are serious issues and there are <laughs> issues that needed to be talked, talked about, about, but it's done in a way that people won't shy away from listening to what yeah. they're saying. Because they, make I really it, like it. Make, cause they deal with it in a funny way. Yeah. And the other thing I've been watching, I've been rewatching Star Trek Voyager. I have no idea why I started again. Because it's good to rewatch it every yeah. few years. It, it was never my favorite Star Trek. DS, I was always a DS9 girl. Um, but I was like, just thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should. So I started right at the beginning. And I'm already into season two. And I'm actually really enjoying it this time around. Um, though it's been kind of my background. Like, you know, have it on while I'm doing yeah. knitting or whatever. Um, it's fun. I rewatch it every few years. Yeah. I, I re- we don't have cable. I love Netflix for stuff like that because some of the old shows that I love, I just get yeah. to mainline, like watch a whole season. And it's fabulous. And yeah, um, so it wasn't my favorite because it was, I was never one for the, the ship, you know, the, the ship show. Like, well, I mean, I loved Next Generation, but just because it was Star Trek of my my youth, um, my youth. Okay, my teenage she years. She didn't appreciate the Gorn I when I tried appreci- to make her watch the original Star Trek. <laughs> I, had, I mean, I had seen some of the original Star Trek, and I'd seen all the movies. Well, I watched them when I was a teenager. Um, but if you watch something twenty years after it's made, thirty years after it's made, it becomes a little dated. <laughs> 
little dated. So I'm not a big original Star Trek fan. She doesn't like Star, Star Wars. Wars. I, I tried to watch it <laughs> 10, 15 years ago the first time. And yeah, I fell little... asleep through the intro both times. Yeah. I was like, how did this become the mega franchise it is? You just, just, just got to give up on the old ones yeah. and, and watch Start with the new Rogue ones. One. Start yeah. with Rogue One. Um, eh. uh, but I'm anyway. a Trekkie. Yeah, she's, I mean, I'm a Trekkie too, but I, I was a huge DS9 fan. Um, I think actually DS9 was kind of my first internet fandom. Oh yeah. That and Caroline in the City. I do remember you being um, that. But yeah, Voyager's really fun. I'm, I'm really enjoying like the whole McKee Starfleet interactions that not everybody's, you know, good old Starfleet. Um, but that's one of the things I liked about DS9 too. And mm -hmm. I, I tried to watch the first episode of Enterprise. I did too. Yeah. It was fine. It was fine. But I couldn't... Okay, so there's three white guys on it. There's the captain. I can recognize Scott Bakula. Yeah. No problem. The other two I couldn't tell apart. <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs> Seriously. I was like, oh, no, that's... I thought he was the uh, navigator. Seriously, I had no clue. I... <laughs> My issue, and maybe it's just because I didn't give it enough time, mm -hmm. was... I didn't really feel for a lot of the characters well, in it. Like, just it was just adventure without... I, I yeah. really like character development. Like, yeah, I think that's too. why I love in Next Gen, you get a lot more, like, stories about Picard's childhood or future or, like... But they were... They were... Every it once wasn't in a while. part of the... Picard's the only one that ever... No, you get some of Will's background and Janeway's yeah. in, in... No, no, I was talking about Voyager in Next and, Gen. Okay, yeah. so apparently this week it's knitting in Star Trek, not knitting in hockey, but... Yeah, no, I'm I'm really enjoying it. You because you get background of all of the characters. The one I just watched is, was a big Harry Kim mm -hmm. episode, and he he was my favorite. He was when I watched it originally, probably because he was a, supposed to be about my age. Yeah, because it started when I was in high school. And he was a clarinet player. He was oh, he a was musician. a clarinet player. Yes, and I was a clarinet player, and he was a nerd. And you I were a nerd. am a nerd. <laughs> um, yeah, this go around. I don't know. I'm actually appreciating Takote. Mm -hmm. who I didn't really the first time around. And I love Janeway. The first time around, I was kind of like, oh yeah, you know, she's the mum figure. <laughs> I've always liked <sighs> the, like the, I loved Spock. Oh, well, yes. And I loved Data. Yes, and, and then I Odo. Loved, well, I was okay oh. with Odo. Oh, I she loved Odo. But, and oh. Seven. Like, those were oh, probably see, I haven't my got three to seven. favorite characters and in see, Star Trek. And see, when I originally watched Voyager, I was pissed off by Seven because I was mad that they had to bring in a hot girl. Mm. I didn't see the point. Yeah. But this time, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to her storylines because I do actually know she gets some good storylines. Yeah, there are And some her and good Janeway ones. get some good storylines together. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, right now, yeah, I'm not up to when Seven comes on. But yeah, you didn't like Odo? But he was, I, he was that fun. kind of character he, on DS9. But, so who did you like on DS9? Um, Probably Kira. Kira was Almost. awesome. If you're really bored by Star Trek, you can leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> we yeah, should have we, put that warning on before. Sorry. <laughs> we mentioned we were light on knitting this week, <laughs> right? I, we've still got like at least 50 minutes. Oh, first yeah, because the first part of the recording. Anyway. Um, anyway, that was our culture consumed this week, <laughs> uh, along Trek. with a little discussion, because we don't actually talk about what we watch. She goes into her room and watches her stuff. I go in the living room and watch mine. So yeah. uh, our personal little um, night and catch up on our favorite TV shows, apparently, <laughs> that you get to join in on. Yeah. So Anything else? Um, I think that's it. Okay. Um, so we'll... We should be... Oh... We should be back in two weeks, but it depends because yeah. we have two hockey games to go to in on the Sunday two weeks from now. Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll fit a podcast in between hockey games. And maybe. We might be able to <laughs> on the Saturday, too. Uh, after work? It's November 11th. No, it's not. Two weeks from now is November. Well, the Saturday is November 4th. The hockey is November right. 5th. So we might be able to fit it in. Sundays are usually our podcasting days. So we might be able to get one in in two weeks. If not, it'll be three weeks this time. Yeah. Um, because we've bought the tickets, and, and, and I don't think hockey. you just want to watch us watch hockey. Um, so <laughs> that we could be fun. We won't put you through that. <laughs> um, so I think we'll leave you there. Yeah. Have a good week or two. Yeah. Um, and thank you.
thanks for joining us and thanks for putting up with our crazy Star Trek <laughs> voyage down memory lane. Yeah. Um, and if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. Um, thanks for subscribing. For those of you who have, we've been yeah. shocked at the number of people who have um, su subscribed to our channel. Yes. And we love your comments and love seeing... Um, your updates on our Ravelry group for those of you who have done that. Oh, Thanks so and if much. anyone else wants to join us with our uh, knit to Al well, Alaska Highway make along, um, I I want to do a, a little video just about what the Alaska Highway is and why we're doing this. Um, that'll happen sometime, really, I promise. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been really fun, and we've we've made it thirty point six kilometers up the highway. Yeah, which we've is... made some good progress this yeah. past month or so. Well, yeah, because I hadn't been updating progress. <laughs> Um, anyway, we're trying to get as far as we can up the Alaska Highway, so mm -hmm. we'd love for you to join us. And we are going to have some kind of uh, prize at uh, a certain number of subscribers. So we'll talk about it more when we when we get closer. Yeah. But prizes. Join in if you would like <laughs> to uh, be in on the prize. Yeah. So. Um, have a wonderful week. See ya. See ya.